Hello, and thank you for joining me for Just Ask Dr. Macy and Guest. I'm your host. I'm Dr. Macy Smith, the social gerontologist providing education, training, and caregiver coaching to help you and your families reach the next best level of care. So family caregiving has been identified as a public health emergency with the Family Caregiving Alliance identifying family caregivers as the backbones to the long-term care system. Currently, there are one in four family caregivers are women, but one in five are men. Many of them in the sandwich generation with very, very successful careers also taking care of a family. Many of our men are caring for their parents, but they're also caring for their spouses. And is spousal caregiving a little bit different from any other caregiving? Well, we'll see. Our guest today is no stranger to our platform. It's none other than Dan Gasby. He joined us around last year to share with us about his caregiving experience with his wife, B. Smith. So for those of you who don't know my guest today, Dan, he is the co-founder of the B. Smith brand, along with his late wife and business partner, the American chef, supermodel, lifestyle maven, B. Smith. Uh, prior to providing care for his wife, B., he had a highly successful television sales and production career for shows such as The Oprah Winfrey Show, Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, and the Essence Awards on CBS. Following B's 2013 early onset Alzheimer's diagnosis, the couple authored the book Before I Forget, and Dan, I forgot to get my book and put it up on my shelf, but I got it. I oh, got that's it. okay. I, no, I, I appreciate the mention, and you know, we we don't worry about those things. I'm, I know, I boy. know. It's and more important. Me... It's more important that what you're doing and what I can attest to uh, gets out there to people who really should hear uh, how important it is to be a caregiver in a situ a familiar situation. Absolutely. Before we we get we go any further, I just you know want to share a couple of your highlights um, with our folks here. Um, he you are um, on the board of directors at the American Brain Foundation. Yes. Been, and yes. you're helping to find a cure for debilitating brain diseases, which I think is huge. And you also um, were the keynote and the recipient of the 2017 Public Leadership in Neurology Award. When do you have the time, sir? You know what? Busy people always find a way to be and get things done. And so uh, I make time, but... Uh, you know, after after B's passing, it became more important that I structured my life around trying to make it easier for others who are going through. So I, I don't mind and I enjoy and uh, I'm just glad to be here with you today. I am glad to have you. So, you know, we we met, I think, probably right at a year ago. Uh, this is part two. It just took it took about a year for us to get part two because you're so busy. But um, you got a lot of love. I will say that. Um when we when we did the interview last year, I'll be honest, I thought that you know I would get a lot of backlash. I thought that you would get even more backlash. But although there were some detractors, there was a lot of love. There was a lot of compassion. There was a lot of understanding. And I'll tell you, I, I want to read one comment. I thought it was so um, so telling of what people experience um, as they provide care for their loved ones, especially spouses. She said, don't judge this man until you've walked in his shoes. And then she went on to talk about her experience as a spousal caregiver for her husband and then the love that she got. Dan, I think there, there are a lot of situations where people are currently going through or who have gone through what you've been through in terms of how you provided care to be, but they just don't talk about it. How do you feel getting that level of compassion and empathy from other people? You know, it's, it's, it's very gratifying. Uh, it was internally very devastating because people accused me of things that weren't true. And more importantly, I mean, just to recap, I did have someone else in my life, uh, 
but that person never lived with us. She came and visited, but everyone made a big deal out of that. But the most important thing about this situation that I encountered was that what do you do when the what nows become, how am I going to deal with this? And that created an environment where I took a lot of heat and then gradually, it wasn't right after your and our conversations that people started to send me notes I didn't know, mm, didn't mm -hmm. understand. Uh, I had one guy send me a note for, on Facebook at like three o'clock in the morning. And he literally cursed me and called me everything but a child of God until his wife had a, a debilitating brain disease and she became totally incompetent. And he basically says, hey man, I just want to verbally, personally apologize because I didn't understand what you were going through. And, and I, I don't know if I could do it. And I've had people call or I run into on the street and they says, you know, I couldn't do it. I had I, I had to put my my loved one away. I, I and I said to them, uh, forgive yourself because you're gonna beat yourself up and you're not gonna get anything out of that. Everyone's not built to take care of another human being, and a, yeah. you know whether it's a child or certainly someone that they've had a long history with, mm -hmm. a sister, a brother, a grandmother, and certainly a spouse. Yeah. And so uh, the biggest thing that you have to understand is that you, you have to learn how to get it out, look at it as what it is and say, here's the best I can do and then try to move on. So, Dan, you're right about that. And I do appreciate the guy reaching back out to you and saying, I didn't know, I didn't understand um, I know that makes you feel good, even though we don't do things to to please and to get praise from other people, only the man above. But it makes you feel good when people show you their support and you feel supported. But there is a difference between spousal caregiving and caring for a parent or another loved one, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, it's definitely uh, a difference. I mean, there is there's so there's so much history that goes into caring for a parent that's possibly based on a whole host of factors like the fact that they took care of you before you knew who you were they did things for you that you couldn't do for yourself they forgave you as you grew up and you remember over a lifetime those things and then coming into a relationship and loving someone and you know they say uh and, and, and when you take your vows till death do you part. But what they don't say is sometimes it's more difficult dealing with the person after they become totally, completely unable in, to do anything for themselves. Because, because that's not the person you married intellectually and cognitively. Physically, and, yeah, but... And, and you're absolutely right. And there's one other dynamic that no one really understands. That relationship over a period of time could have been eroding simply because they didn't realize what was happening to the person where there was more arguments or there was more strife or more distance or lack of intimacy. And all of those things tend to erode that, that bond. And now all of a sudden you find, I've got to take care of this person for the rest of my life. I don't feel the same way I did 10 years ago, five years ago, three years ago, uh -huh, I'm, going uh -huh. through, I'm going through a living, a living hell. And now I've got the burden of taking care of that person. And because I am taking care of that person, other people who are tangential to my, my relationship with her or him are now weighing in on how I'm doing or what I'm doing or if I'm doing enough. And so all of those factors tend to create just a, a, an unbelievably stressful situation. And it is, with, with your spouse, it's stressful. You know, your grandmother, well, you remember her, you know, you, 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 you know, you remember she knew you, she did this, you tasted her food, this, that, and the other, and it's from childhood. And so it's almost baked in, ingrained with a relationship that starts out an adult 
and then deteriorates or, or glides into oblivion. There's a whole different sense and of circumstances and situations. And you know, it, that is a great point, great analogies too. Without sickness, your situations change. You know, relationships change. Your role in the relationship changes because I'll tell you, uh, um, when I met my husband, now I'm still head over heels in love with him too. <laughs> However, <laughs> love him to death. I, I believe you. I believe. I, I, I do. I love him. I love him to death. But whereas uh, 20 years ago, I might have, I might have cut off both of my hands from him. This time, I might just cut off one hand. Right. So right. He, he's not my complete life, but he is a, an integral, an integral part of me. You know, yes. a part of my life. And sometimes we do change roles. You know, Dan, sometimes, a lot of times he'll wash the dishes, yeah. you know, and I'll cook sometimes. Yeah, now, sometimes. <laughs> when he want to change the role and cook, I don't do that too much because he cook everything on high. But, you know, when it's cooked on high and the middle ain't done, you know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> but, you know, we do change roles and in a relationship and it changes over time. And so there, there is a difference. There were some comments that relate that related your caregiving to when when she cared for her grandfather. And I said, that, that is two totally different things because they're different emotions, don't you think? You love the person and you care about the person, but it's a little different. It's no, it's, 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 uh, it's totally, totally different. There's a, there's a sense of responsibility that comes from a familiar uh, uh, cohesiveness and what the family would think, you know, uh, that is totally uh, uh, abstract when you get to the relationship between a husband and a wife or, or partners. And so uh, people have to understand that there are nuances and those nuances are, uh, you know, the easiest way to describe it is it's a little bit different the same way uh, a train track, if it's off just a little bit and the train's on that track down the road the train's going to derail or go off the track because it's not in parallel mm -hmm. well that same kind of relationship exists i think even stronger with grandma or or auntie or your parents depending upon how you dealt with them before or, or whether what the love situation and, and then also the, the difference is it's a there's a burden factor you are burdened and because and of that you know, what the burden may have been for uh, a parent that wasn't didn't treat you particularly well or you didn't have a relationship with is one thing. And the burden and, and that burden factor is lessened or mitigated by the fact that you had a great relationship or you didn't have a great relationship with your spouse over the past X number of years. And now you're starting a whole new, as you said, the re roles are reversed. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So do you have any regrets in terms of your caregiving style, your ability to care, the feelings and your emotions that you experienced? Because you had mentioned, you mentioned burden. That is a real feeling. And you're talking about that feeling. We got to give people permission to say what they're feeling in terms of individuals who are currently providing care for their spouse who has Alzheimer's, which is different from other debilitating illnesses. It is different. Do you have any regrets about your caregiving style? And if you do, what were they? And what tips or advice would you give to those who are sitting in your seat right now? Uh, I can tell you, I, you know, I can look any human being or he or who has no name and I, I have no regrets. I have absolutely no regrets on what I tried to do what I did, did I uh, fail in some circumstances? Yes. Did I get tired or did I, you know, I, I would walk at the time I would walk out on the, to the beach and just yell and scream and curse and say, why me? Why did I didn't deserve this? I, I'm so sick and tired. Or once, you know, when she would break something and I, I cut my foot and I had to get stitches and, you know, yeah, you get to those naders and then you come back because I loved her. But did, was was it, it, I was in a, uh, 
I was in an abusive relationship. Wow. And you have to understand that. But the abuse is not because she's an abuser. It's because the disease. The disease. Absolutely. The that, that, that is the abuse right there. That's the abuser. You know, the I, I, was, I, I always liken it to being what terrorism is. Wow. It's, it's a form, of, it's a form of, of, of familiar terrorism. I mean, this is a person you cannot change. This is a person that is hell-bent on what their disease dictates to them, genetically, socially, psychologically, physically, and you can't change it. Only thing you can do is adapt and modify yourself and find ways to release the burden. It's a burden. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. People don't want to admit what it is. It's It's miserable. How it's, do you how do you advise them in in that role so that way they won't harm well, their I, loved one or they won't harm themselves? No, I say I say the first thing you have to do is you have to be able to say what you feel to yourself out loud. I, I mean to ex, I you know I can't stand this. This is ridiculous. She's doing this to me, and you and you walk around and get it out so that it becomes less and less something in your head and more and more something out in the universe that you're hearing yourself say, and like anything, if you say something long enough, it takes on less importance or, it, or it, 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 you calm yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you have to try to find, hopefully one or two people that don't have ulterior motives or agendas because you do become vulnerable. And that you can, you can go and say, you know, hey, hey, Kathy, I, you know, I'm just so sick and tired of doing this, I, I you know, I'm not going to stop, but I just got to tell you, I'm tired. I, I just want to run away. I can't take it today. And hopefully that person has the, the, in, the insight to say, you know, you deserve to be tired. Mm -hmm. And you deserve to, to, to go away. And maybe I can help you do that. Or maybe I can find some. But I know who you are. Yeah. You, gotta, you, you have to have an outlet. You have to, you have to, it's a pressure cooker and you got to take oh, yeah. the top off. Oh yeah. Because so like my, below. That's right. Like, um, you know, I'm from the country. So my mama would get a uh, Pepsi and put a uh, salted peanuts in it and shake it up a little bit. Right. But you got to let it settle because she takes that top off immediately. It's going to explode because exactly. it's building up. So I like that you said that, that they have to have an outlet. You have to be willing and okay with expressing how you feel your feelings, you, you should not camouflage your feelings because you're right, you will explode. You have to have an outlet to be able to express it, a safe outlet, as you stated, because there are people out there ready to take advantage of various situations. They are, they, I call them hyenas. <laughs> they, they, are, they are social hyenas. They look for that weakness. You know, uh, a hyena can't kill a, a a healthy lion. It goes after the weak ones. Yeah, I mean, hey, that, that's their strategy. Hey. I will say too, Dan, that something that has just been evolving for some time now, and as I continue to, to grow in my career, I see it even more so now than ever before. And because I'm coming from, just say, a micro approach to providing support for families before you started taking care of your beautiful wife B you had a successful career in television I don't know where you're at with television now but we'll we'll find out before we close out this interview but you either had to let that go or put that on the back burner to take care of your wife and of course that's something that you wanted to do but I'm I feel that corporate America no matter what industry that is they're not feeling or understanding or recognizing that family caregiving doesn't just affect the family, but it affects corporations. It affects the economy. When something has been classified as a public health epidemic, like family caregiving is, it affects the economy. What responsibility do you think corporate America, again, blinding all the industries, what responsibility should they have in supporting family caregivers? Well, or is there look, a need? There, there, there's look, look at it this way. On the front end, women should be able to have a baby 
and have time off so that they can do the pregnancy in a period of time that they can get that 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 infant to a certain stage where they can come back whole. And, and we can discuss how long that should be. And on the back end, when people are dealing with catastrophic situations in their family, and particularly spousal, because that's a one-on-one -on -one situation, they should be able to have a certain amount of time to be able to take care or to get them to the proper uh, doctors, resources. Mm -hmm. it's a, 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 that's what a, a modern, humane, sophisticated society should do. We should take care of our young, mm -hmm. our vulnerable young, and we should certainly take care of our uh, mature and, uh, and elderly. And everything in between is what we do to get to that point so that we have the systems, we have the mechanisms to be able to do that. Uh, we we need more of that in America, you know? Yeah. We, and, and, and it's critical because what you said is it's a tsunami, it's an epidemic. And it's gonna be, and, and I can't tell you, I, I don't, it's not a week goes by that I don't hear from someone, particularly people of color, but I hear from people in general. We're on the, on the verge of, of healthcare collapse. We, we, we're not taking care of ourselves. People are getting dementia. Alzheimer's is the, you know, the largest form of dementia, 60 plus percent of all dementias are Alzheimer's. And we're also having that uh, convergence of people are living longer because once they start to take drugs and medications, it's not like they la last five or six years. They could last 10, 12, 15 right. years. Because those, so, you know, those, those yeah. medications, those uh, medications are managing those chronic illnesses. You're right. So if you're, yeah. So if you're 55, forget about your, your, your spouse, but if you're 55 and whoever that person is, be he man or woman, lives another 15 years, the time of your life where you're supposed to uh, enjoy the fruits of your labor and uh, be able to pass on wealth and information to uh, the generation behind you, your children and even your children's children, you're in a war. And that war takes up so much of your creative, your, your, your compassionate energy, you know, it's hard to be 24-7 with someone that is like 11 or an 8 or a 7-year-old and then have compassion for everything else. It, it's it's a zero-sum, you yeah. know, game. It, and it does affect the quality of work, which is going to affect the bottom line of the corporations. And so I know that you do a lot of advocacy work. Have you made any attempts to lobby legislation around family caregivers? I know there have been attempts and we're still working on that in terms of having law to whereas individuals can take time off to take care of their spouse or their loved one who has a debilitating illness without having to take use their annual leave and sick leave. But, you know, have you been lobbying any legislation? Uh, I, you know what? I, I, I'll be candid. I After COVID, the bad and the good thing about COVID is this. It, it has short-circuited some of the things that I wanted to do. Uh, and, and I'm back on track not to get off, but I'm going to answer your question. The answer is no, not to the point that I want to in terms of lobbying uh, local, state, and federal leg legislators. But what has happened, uh, my father used to say, you can't grow anything without a little manure. <laughs> uh, we all became caregivers over the, the COVID pandemic. People didn't understand what a caregiver was or what being in a caregiving situation is writ large until the whole world had to stop. That's exactly right. Great point. And so it elevated everything up to understanding uh, there but for the grace of God go I, or I am in it and now I need help or I didn't know, or the whole notion of of loneliness. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, so the a bad thing happened that elevated a lot of things that we need to deal with because we all have 
or we'll have a COVID-like situation where we're isolated mm-hmm. or where we're uh, alienated or alone and we have to deal with someone else or someone else or ourselves. And how do we understand that? So I took a lot out of the COVID situation to understand, yeah, you're right. Uh, family caregiving should be a priority the same way, uh, you know, prenatal care is on the up on the opposite end of the spectrum. That's exactly right. Like from from cradle to grave, basically, is what yeah. it is. But what do they say in the Bible? Uh, once an adult and twice a child. Yeah, and I I mean, look, I love the Lord, but I, I can't get I can't get with that one because yeah. I, I, I mean I think God might have meant something else, but you know, man takes it to mean what they want it to mean, and that phrase, I think that phrase gives some people the green light to treat their loved ones as a child and not as the mom or the wife or the dad. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 well, like you said, you know, it's subject to interpretation. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly right. Dan, what, what keeps you in the fight? We lost Um, B in, we lost B in 2020, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, uh, uh, February 22nd, 2020. Wow. And you notice I said we, because you know she belonged to all of us. I mean, I know yeah. she yours, but I no, mean, you the know whole what? world I, I, felt it. I'm going to tell you something. What I always understood, and I've even had some issues with uh, some in her family because I keep putting things out about her and doing things. And the one thing that I understood well into the relationship, when you see a person who walked into that restaurant or met her on the street or came up to me, And they were, in the best sense of the words, bedazzled by her her innate beauty as well as her physical beauty. I knew, and I'm not a jealous person, I knew that she didn't belong to me. I I just got a good lease, you know? Uh, And so I'm trying my damnedest to, I'm working on two projects, a a, a movie and a documentary about, about her because so many things she did uh, I look at what people are doing now and the lifestyle stuff. She was ahead of the, ahead of the game. And she had this ability. Uh, you know, we live in a tribal world today, more tribal than ever. She was a universalist. Mm-hmm. You know, she was comfortable. She used to say, I am a Black woman who wants to understand about other people because if all I ever do is talk about me and not understand you, how am I ever going to really get you to understand me? If I understand you, then when I articulate my understandings and if they make sense, then I will be able to, when I tell you my story, you'll be much more interested, intrigued, and you'll listen. So I'm, I'm working on, on that, uh, on, on, on a movie we're gonna we're gonna and the other thing was she was she was a celebrity celebrity she wasn't as big as beyonce or or big uh, uh, you know as, as uh halle barry or people but they knew that she had class before and 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 she operated on a grassroots level as a model turned into a restaurateur turned into you know who who does Books, TV, magazine, radio, products. Who does it? Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> and, and constantly evolve. You know, who yeah. can walk into a room and find the one person that was being ostracized or set in the corner and go sit and talk to them and not worry about everyone else and make that person feel special. As I always said, there are a lot of people that call themselves divas. She was a true diva because she wasn't a diva. Right, right. She, she could talk and be to any situation or anyone. And that, that that smile and that laugh that I miss every day was like a bottle of champagne opening. That's you, you could not, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and she was very proud of being a Black woman. She was very proud of her history. She could cook like your grandmother and she could walk down a runway, you know, like 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 a like a superstar. And, That's right. <laughs> you know, so it it it's uh so I'm trying to pull that together and uh 
you know, I, I don't know if you noticed, but this is my wedding band. I, I found it. I put it in a oh. safe and I cut it off because a part of me is never going to be the same. And so I have my wedding band as my earring. I love that. I, I didn't notice that last time, so I did notice it today. No, this, just ha- this, is just, this just happened recently. This just happened recently. Wonderful. I did have it. I had at one time I had a ruby because uh, she loved she loved rubies and rubies made your you know we had a very very powerful relationship you know Kublai Khan said rubies would make the soul boil oh, okay. and, you know it's the, it's the second hardest stone next to the only thing harder than a ruby is a diamond but she was she was a ruby you know uh, diamonds are ice and she was fire okay. you know. You know, so uh, I but love, I love that. This, this, is, this is my this is my new thing, and I found one of her her small uh, earrings, and I made that into an earring. So I may I may go I may go both earrings. You know it. Yeah, why not? I mean, look, yeah. look, then ain't nothing to it but to do it, right? Hey, as I close in, as I get closer and closer to seventy, I say to myself, you know, I'm not gonna look. I don't look in the rearview mirror anymore. Keep it. Look, keep it pushing. No, absolutely, absolutely. You, de- you deserve the right. So I do know that these products are in some of the retailers. Tell us how we can actually go and purchase some of our items. Well, we we were, you know, Bed Bath and Beyond has had a literally an implosion, and we are now uh, we we are online. Uh, we are moving into major stores like Ross and and Burlington and. Uh, a, a few more to come, but you can find them online. You can find them on Amazon. There's a whole big uh, B Smith page. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. I'm going to keep the B name going, and I want to make this movie happen because what people don't know, and especially young women, and particularly young women of color, black women, that you can be anything if you work hard enough, and yeah. And I mean, and the things she had to overcome were difficult, but she she had that evanescent personality that I'm I'm not. She had a saying that uh, should be lionized. I've stood on a mountain of no's for one yes, and that's what she did. And so that's why I I love talking to you because I know you have a mission and I know you care. And I know you understand within our community, uh, we have we we have the greatest group of people ever assembled on the earth. Everyone wants to be like us, but everyone doesn't want to like us and love right. us. And, they don't want our str- they don't want our struggles and our experiences. They don't. Yeah, they, yeah. They they want the pay, but they don't want the mint. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hear you. You I know. And so. Uh, so I'm going to keep it going. It, it it gives me great pleasure. You know, I I, I keep her in my ear. I, I I have her in the dining room. Uh, and I'm just, you know, I'm going to... Someone asked me, how do you want to be remembered? And I said, with plans. <laughs> Always I trying to make, make something a little better uh, in her honor, in my honor, and it in our honor, you know, yeah. put, put, you know, I've been fortunate to take quite a bit out of the pot. I try to put something back in the pot. That's right. And you're doing it, brother. Like my grandmama said, and my mama, you always want to leave the place, whatever the place may be, a little bit better off than what you found it. And my so, mother, my, you, hey, Mace, my mother said, we, we, we could be relatives. <laughs> that's, I know, we, we are. Well, I thank you so much for joining us again, and we will Stay in touch like we've always done. And you let us know how we can help you in any of your ventures. I'll tell you what you can do. Yes, sir. Keep telling the story and 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 and, 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 and tell pe- people to be honest about their situations, particularly their health. Yeah. Uh, it's so important. And, and to work out, to exercise, to walk. It's, it's so important because I see so many people that are stroking out or, 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 or you know, having cardiovascular disease. It's just, it's yeah. an epidemic. It truly is. Well, we will kindly take your advice. And when I get finished this cup of coffee with a whole lot of cream and a whole lot of sugar, then I'm going to drink some water. How about that? And green tea and green tea. 
<laughs> okay, green tea. Okay. I'm going to add that to my regimen. Well, thank okay. you so much, and we will be talking to you soon. Thank you all so much for joining us again, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.